what's good youtube we are back we are back we are back with this part two of this basketball legend trim labor 1991 documentary you know we don't waste no time let's get straight into the video we're gonna finish off where we at i think i should have some time so we should have some good minutes going on to this video but let's get straight into it in the world of indiana basketball indiana state university was barely on the map but for larry bird it would be a place that felt like home. Terre Haute is like a, a small town. It's not a small town. It's got 100,000 people or so, but people treat you like it's a small town. Everybody knows you. Uh, and I think Larry felt like it was kind of an extension of French Lick. As he set out his first year as a transfer, Larry also came to feel at ease in the Indiana State basketball program. And when he finally did hit the court in the fall of 1976, now fully grown at six feet nine inches tall, he was ready to bring the unheralded Sycamore's national prominence and take the state of Indiana by storm. Wherever Hoosiers gather, they no longer talk of weather. Indiana has a new state of birth. Now his claim to fame is just the way he plays the game. Indiana has a new state of birth. He tells your name, although I don't think we need to ask. Brad Miley. Brad Miley. <laughs> You're not Brad Miley. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. It's not the Cardinal now. Hey, Larry, take a bow. Indiana has a new state bird. And you're from French Lick, Indiana. You said it all when you said it. Yeah. From out of old French Lick on up to ISU, he came to play some basketball. What position do you play with the team? Um, well, you know, as you know, I have to do everything, so I play all positions. Ah, <laughs> uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> and that's true. That's the crazy part about it. Now we don't know a thing about what the future will bring But for now we're gonna spread the word The fighting sick of boys are racking up the scores And Indiana has a new state bird Indiana has a new state bird Larry had become a basketball phenomenon A big man who could shoot and pass like a guard playing for a little-known rural college and resembling a 20th century Huckleberry Finn. He seemed as if out of a storybook, and quite naturally, the national media began to flock to Terre Haute. People were coming down from everywhere, uh, other networks, CBS, NBC, uh, uh, ABC, uh, but he didn't have a lot to say. Uh, not that he couldn't say it, it's just that he was a little quiet, a little backward. All of a sudden, you went from this quiet guy with his friends to people looking over your shoulders, reporters following you around everywhere you went, um, people taking pictures, and, and it was something that I didn't, I didn't like, and it was tough for me to deal with. Bird would soon have more to deal with than just his newfound notoriety. Having sat out a year as a transfer, he was eligible for the 1978 NBA draft, despite being only a junior. Chosen by the Celtics, he faced a difficult choice of gaining instant financial security or returning to Indiana State for his senior season. Yeah, he wasn't going to go with Boston. See, money at that time, uh, money was foreign to him. You know, he, he made $6 an hour. That's pretty darn good. It really wasn't that, that tough because I wanted to get my education while I was there because I knew I would never go back. And you know, the one thing about athletes is they always say, well, I'll go back next year and do it, but they never do. Bird was staying put at Indiana State. But nevertheless, the season's prospects did not seem very bright. Head coach Bob King had suffered a stroke and was replaced by Bill Hodges on the sidelines. The Sycamores would begin the 78-79 campaign with a rookie head coach, a group of role players, and one determined All-American to lead them. Every offense we ran, the first thing we wanted to happen was Larry to touch the ball. And that was our goal, was to get it in his hands 75% of the time that we had it. And boy, you get the ball in his hands, he did a tremendous job with it. Bird and his Sycamores would defy the odds as they stunned the college basketball world by posting the best record in the nation. The way we were beating teams was just on pure guts and determination. 
So we just got in our minds that we weren't gonna get beat. With Bird providing the inspiration, Indiana State ignored their limitations. By Larry practicing and playing 100%, you know, he, he demanded that you play 100%. He demanded that you take a charge or you dive after that ball because he would do the same thing. And he missed it. Miley has it with two seconds. Eaton half the length of the court. Got it! And it's going! He made it! He made it! Got it! I don't believe it! From half the And it's by I don't believe this. Pulling out improbable victory after improbable victory, the Sycamores would finish the season undefeated, earning their school's first NCAA tournament berth and becoming the country's Cinderella team. Everything just fell into place. It was not only good for the, the college, it was good for the community, and it was good for the players. It was everybody involved, it, it was just something that happens once in a life. The Sycamores' fairy tale story would continue in the NCAA playoffs as they knocked off the Hokies of Virginia Tech and the Sooners of Oklahoma. Cinderella was still at the ball, and versus Arkansas in the regional finals, midnight was nowhere in sight. Seven seconds Reed. to go. Reed gets it to Heaton. Heaton the clutch. Left hand! He made it! Bob Heaton! He's Indiana State undefeated! They're on the final four! It's destiny for these guys, Jim. He made a 50. How good does it feel? You're going to the final four. Larry had made it. He had watched Indiana celebrate a national championship without him. Now, he would lead his Sycamores into Salt Lake City as part of one of the most celebrated Final Four in college basketball history. Facing favored DePaul, he would play his best game of the tournament, hitting an incredible 16 of 19 field goals. Oh, what a catch! What a catch! Drops in another! were headed for the finals. Their dream season was nearing an end. But for Larry Bird, it would be a crossroads that in many ways crystallized everything that had brought him so far from home. It was the end of a magical season and the beginning of a new journey It was the final game of a five-year basketball odyssey and a final step into the national spotlight. It was Larry Bird's greatest defeat and the start of his greatest challenge. When Larry Bird arrived at Boston Garden, he found himself in basketball's holiest cathedral at a time when its fortunes had never been lower and its expectations had never been higher. But to outward appearances, this gangly country boy seemed ill-equipped to fulfill his role as savior. This is the kid, you know, I mean, he doesn't look all that good. You know, and uh, there's talk about how slow he was, he couldn't jump, he couldn't defend. I think when, when Larry first uh, arrived, everybody thought, well, here's a kid now that uh, I don't know if he's gonna be able to play in this league. But as Boston would soon find, Bird's talents could not be measured by appearances alone. Larry Bird felt there wasn't anything he couldn't do on a basketball floor. And, you know, when you have that kind of confidence, uh, there's nothing that you can't do. He was the most self-motivated player I ever saw. With an inexhaustible resourcefulness, Bird would display a unique mastery of the game that would quickly convince his skeptics. It's just an uncanny sense, and uh, he'll do things out there you just say, and it just leaves you shaking your head and, and smiling. Although he's still going for those fakes. Larry would make a bounce pass behind the back on the fast break, and you say, well, Where's this ball going? Collins going against Bird. Behind the back to Taney. Beautiful. He's got the smarts. <laughs> nice. Get it going. He was no country pumpkin. And then Bird goes inside. Out of the corner. Oh. 
you know, Larry's great at playing that. You know, come into my web, said the spider that flies. Here's a steal by Bird. Just walked right into the passing lane. It's like watching a, uh, a cat play with a mouse. Now they clear a side for Larry. Fakes it. Bird. Ah! Here's the play of the game, right there. He's so intelligent. He has eyes all around his head. Larry's going to slow it up. No, it goes over the head to McHale. Save that one, guys. Offensive board on the cut to Bird. Swings through. That'll be burst. Way up the score. How did he make that? Bird was a basketball virtuoso. He was a showstopper, capable of giving brilliant individual performances. But perhaps his greatest talent was his ability to orchestrate for his teammates. He created an unselfish attitude on the team as far as looking for the open man. If the guy's open, the guy's going to get the ball for the open shot. You get so many ease in basket because uh, you draw so many defensive attention and you find yourself all alone in basketball and can test the layup. He understood how to get Kevin and Robert shots, and Cedric Maxwell. And he also knew when any of these individuals were not getting enough shots in the game or were not involved in the offense, and he'd make a concerted effort to get them involved. When you've got a bird out there, the other four guys know if you just move and get in the right place, that's your only responsibility, you know that ball's gonna be there. It's beautiful. You, uh, you get four other guys overachieving, you make them better basketball players. The thrill and the beauty of the Celtics playing was the ball moving from one side of the floor to the other side, three or four crisp passes and an easy shot resulting from that. That's basketball. That's password. That's teamwork. And Larry brought that back to Boston Celtics. Larry Bird's first four years in the league had been nothing short of miraculous. He'd been named Rookie of the Year. He'd been a first-team All-Star every season, and he had led his Celtics from the cellar to a championship. And though Boston's 1982 and 83 seasons had ended in playoff disappointment, Bird had still far exceeded all expectations, except his own. We had a team there when we won in 81, I thought we was gonna win five or six in a row, because we had that much talent. But we just didn't do the things that, that it took for us to win a championship. In those same four years, Bird's college rival, Magic Johnson, had reached the finals three times and won two championships, establishing his Lakers as the league's most dominant team. It was a situation that did not sit well with Larry Bird. This man will not accept losing. He's like um, a guy uh, who would pick a, a, a locomotive up and and, uh, with ropes, pull a locomotive. He, he, he'll endure anything to win. From the beginning of the 1984 season, Bird's determination was clear. While he always possessed a tireless work ethic, now he displayed it with an unmistakable message to his teammates. You know, he was the first guy to practice, uh, last guy to leave. It was very hard for us as, as players to look over and see Larry doing drills by himself for an hour, an hour and a half after practice, two hours after practice, for us not to pay the price. When you get your, quote, superstar to, to work at a high level in practice, everybody else falls in line, because this is the, the man, and he will work. And Larry worked every day. It was an attitude that would drive the Celtics all season long. Look out, Bird to the crowd! Ooh, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Um, yeah, we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to definitely have that part three. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I don't want to, like, I'm, I'm going to break them up. I thought maybe one and two, but maybe three and four, because I'm trying to break it up in enough parts for y'all so it won't be too, too long, you know? So, you know, but, uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into this part three. This is part two is definitely good. Um, yeah, um, I know y'all loving this. Some people saying they didn't see this documentary. I was just actually shocked and surprised when people said they didn't see this. I was just like, wait, well, y'all haven't? But, hey, you know, some people see some things, some people don't. But I thought a lot, most of y'all might have seen it. But some people was telling me they haven't seen this one before. But, um, yeah, so we're going to have a three and four. 
Um, definitely three. Yeah, three and four. Three and four. Yeah, three and four. But um, yeah, I just don't. I don't. I don't. I just like to be able to, not too too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to keep y'all interested and not go too long and just kind of like just the whole like you know. So definitely look out for part three and definitely look out for part four. Definitely will be up very soon asap and uh yeah man but uh, subscribe if you're new hit that like button turn on that bell man i'm uploading every single day and uh yeah we're gonna get straight on to that part three I'm loving this part two um i wanted to point out something but I, i'm not gonna take up too much time though y'all but i deeply deeply man i'm telling you y'all, I, i'm i deeply appreciate all the love and support y'all been showing me so much like just every day I wake up, I just always think to myself, like, wow, like, you know, I just deeply appreciate it so much. But anyway, man, I'm getting on to this part three and going to work on part four also. So it's going to be four parts, four parts. But, um, yeah, that's about it. I love y'all. I'm out of here. Let's get straight on to the part three. Peace.